welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a walkthrough assembly of the Ender 3 V2. First of all, as usual, just remove everything from the box. Here's the base, the extruder and the hot end. And the very very nice V2 screen and a filament holder. Now this is the profile pillars and the lead screw rollers and the Z-axis motor. Here's something new to the V2, that's the belt tensioner for the X-axis. A whole bunch of tools which I won't be opening because I'll be using my O1. And a bag of all the rest of the screws, the filament and the knob for your extruder. Okay, so first of all, let's make sure that all these cables and the bolden tube is not entangled. And the first step that I always do is to make sure that the bed is firm and stable. Okay, seems like this one is alright. So, but if it's a little bit wobbly, okay, it's a little bit too tight. So, I'm going to just loosen it up a little bit. Okay, so if it's wobbly, you just tighten it up. If it's too tight, then just loosen it. Alright, if you don't loosen it, you might get some of the rollers getting stuck. And it will impact your print quality. Oh, that's the tray there. Okay, so seems everything is nice. Make sure the cables are not you know, blocking anything. Okay, slide nicely and stable. Okay, we can adjust the tensioner. Okay, now these are the two profile pillars. Let's open it up. As with the older Ender trees, there are two profile pillars, one on the left and the right. The one on the right with two holes on the top and the bottom, that's on the right side. And on the left, this two with the two holes at the bottom is the left pillar. The pillar that we need now. So let's unpack the screw and then fasten the screw to the pillars. However, don't tighten it yet. We will be doing some minor adjustments later. I must say, I really love the rubber pads at the four corners of this Ender 3 V2. You won't find it in the previous Ender 3 and this helps with vibration and also the sound. Okay, it's tight but I can still move the pillar about. That's okay because we'll be using it to do some uh, adjustments later. Next, we're going to put in this Z-axis motor. There'll be two screws for that and make sure that you don't over tighten it as well because after that we need to put the lead screw and only after the lead screw we're going to tighten it so just enough to hold it that's good enough next let's go ahead and install the z-axis limiter switch so this one is exactly the same as the ender 3 older versions okay clicky little switch here so just unfasten these particular two screws make sure that the nut doesn't fall off uh, slide them into the profile pillar and tighten them up this one you can tighten all the way but make sure that the limiter switch is all the way to the bottom next we'll be identifying the x-axis pillar so there are two pillars that are the same size one is for the top pillar which you can easily see it with uh, four screw holes on top and the other one with like six screw holes that is the x-axis pillar so you need to identify the left and the right it's very easy the one that is closest together that's the left and the other one is the right let's go ahead and grab the extruder motor assembly so hold it with the barcode facing you, the QR code facing you and the extruder motor is facing upwards. Now the bar will be installed in front. You just need to have two screws and the screws is coming from the inside to be mounted on the X-axis pillar. But what I like to do first is just to slide the entire assembly down the rail because you can see here, sometimes it's a little bit tight, like this, you see, it's stuck. So what we do is we have to loosen the roller a bit. So there's an eccentric screw where you can loosen it and now you see it can move smoothly. Make sure that it's not too tight and of course not too loose. After that's done, 
Let's slide the whole assembly out and proceed with installing the X-axis profile. So let's grab the screws and from the inside, I will usually just drop the screw through the hole, align the axis pillar and then proceed to fasten them from the back. So for this particular two screws, I fasten them but not till very tight because we still need to adjust them later on. Alright, so tight enough so that when you apply pressure, the pillars will move because this particular part is very important for us to make sure that it's totally square. Okay, looking good. So now you can see I can slightly move them up and down and front and back. So that means my x-axis pillars and my original z-axis pillars are just enough to hold them straight. So now using the square, I make sure that the x-axis is now squared to the bed, right, like this. And then you can double check with the z-axis as well, okay. So once that's done, okay, what I can do is I can go ahead and tighten the z-axis pillar by tightening these two big nuts here as tight as I can. So now I know that this particular axis is straight and we can firm it up. Okay, after this is done, we'll go ahead to check on the x-axis. Okay, so let's check it one more time. Okay, nice and square with the bed and also with the other pillars at the bottom. Now it's for the x-axis leveling to make sure that it is level Okay, parallel to the bed and also squared from the z-axis. So using this particular square tool is very useful and by doing this properly, you will make sure that you eliminate all the issues when you're having during prints. If this is not built correctly, your prints might not be straight and sometimes you have the levels that are shifting and things like that. Okay, so one is done. I can go ahead and tighten it as tight as I can. With that done, we can slide it back onto the Z-axis and use the square to double check it one more time to make sure that everything is squared and perfectly straight. Okay, so I like to use this square this way and make sure that both the axis, the Z-axis and the X-axis is totally squared. So with this part alone, actually you can operate the Ender 3. It's just like the previous version of the Ender 3s with just two particular profile axes. Um, and now we can uh, slide in the print head, the hot end. And make sure that the hot end is moving nicely. Okay, if not, we can always adjust the eccentric nut for the rollers. And the next step is to put in the belt. Actually, the proper step is actually to put in the lead screw on this part. I will get back to that shortly. In this particular video, I made a mistake because I went ahead to put in the belt first. If we were to put in the lead screw first, at least the whole x-axis can be slightly higher and I don't have to you know, force myself to crouch and to look at where the belt is going. Okay. So it's always good to put the lead screw first. So now what I'm doing is I'm putting the belt in. Make sure that the geared part of the belt is facing inside of the pillar. And let's slide in the entire hot end assembly and proceed to lock down the belt underneath it. So this is the part where I realized that I should have done the lead screw first. To put on the lead screw is fairly simple. Just be careful as if you hold it wrongly, you have your fingers filled with grease. So just slide it down and make sure the lead screw is in the holder of the Z-axis motor. Okay. If it's not going in, you can loosen the holder first and make sure that the lead screw 
slide all the way in. Once it's done, you can tighten them up. Once it's tightened, you can twist on the holder of the lid screw to make sure that the whole x-axis move up and down freely. Alright, and if it's smoothly like this, means everything is fine. So once it's in, it's very easy for you to make the x-axis higher and proceed to install the belt. So I have one part of the belt in and before we go on to install the x-axis belt tensioner, we will install the x-axis roller first. Okay, so these rollers are actually a guide so that it can help to stabilize the whole x-axis on the right profile pillar. You can do it like this and then because we have everything else squared, so this part will be squared and nice and we can proceed to put in the screws from behind and tighten them up. If this particular part, you find out that the pillars are not straight, that means your original x-axis and z-axis pillars are not straight. So you might need to relook into them and make sure that it's square. Once that's done, you can put in the two large screws below and tighten the right profile pillars. With that done, we can now proceed to put in the belt through the x-axis belt tensioner. But if you can see, if you are trying to just force the belt in, it's very hard for you to get the belt into the roller and coming out from the other side again. So the best way is just totally removing the whole tensioner by just unfastening this blue knob. Push the entire roller out. Insert the belt through the roller. Okay, make sure that the head of the belt, which is the hardest to go through, okay, make sure that it's going through the roller and the teeth of the belts are touching the rollers in the inside. String it all the way down. You can leave it hanging for a while while you hook the ends of the belt to our hot end. Right, so make sure that it's tight. Both sides hooked to the hot end. And now this particular part, we just insert the housing of the tensioner all the way in and then put back the blue knob and tighten it as tight as you want. Once the housing is in, we just um, put back the screws that are holding the housing of the tensioner to the x-axis profile. So there's one in front and the other one behind that is attached to the rollers of the x-axis. The last profile pillar will be the top pillar. Just make sure that the four big screw holes are facing upwards. Now with the four large screws, we can just fasten these pillars down. It's always a good idea to move your ender tree by holding on to this pillar. Okay, so with that done, let's move on to assembling all the cables for our ender tree V2. Let's start off with the Z-axis motor and the limit switch. So you can see here, the Z-axis cables are actually down here. And the bigger one is for the motor. Just snap it in tightly. And the smaller coupling is for the limit switch. Okay, let me turn it over so that it's easier for you to see. Here's the smaller coupling and we just need to snap into the coupling from beneath. And the rest of the cables here, you can see two large coupling and one small one. This is for the X-axis motor and the other one will be for the extruder motor. So just remember the bigger ones are for the motors and the smaller one is for the limit switch. So the extruder motor is labeled as E Right, you can find it here, labeled properly. And the big one, make sure the direction is correct and just snap it into place. Okay, yeah, I got it the wrong direction the first time. 
just snap it into place and the other one will be labeled as X for the X axis motor same thing as well make sure the direction is correct and snap it into place right with that done the toughest one is actually the limit switch which is inside right what you can do is just to make sure that it is hold properly the right direction and you can just push it in with your finger if you're having problems you can always use the allen key to help you press it in once that's done the last part will be the bowden tube all right so this particular one you can just put it in so this ender 3 v2 comes with the pneumatic coupler to install it is quite easy so first of all on the threaded end which is like a screw you just screw in into the extruder okay yep clockwise and you'll get it tightened you can use the wrench that's provided to tighten it and for the fastener make sure that it's pressed down push the bowden tube all the way in and lift it up to lock the bowden tube into place there's a little blue clip that is provided with your Ender 3 V2. Make sure that you clip it into place to make sure that it's tight and holding on to the Bolden tube. Next step is to install the awesomely nice LCD screen of the Ender 3 V2. So with that, you have to first install the holder. The holder is fastened with just these three screws. So just unfasten the screw. Make sure that the nut is aligned into the profile railings and then tighten them up. Remember to connect the communication port into the screen. So for the Ender 3 V2, there's only one port. You won't go wrong. Just make sure that the direction is correct. On the previous Ender 3, there are three ports. So you have to choose the right one. Now just slide the screen onto the holder and we are almost done the last part will be to install the filament holder this is pretty straightforward you got these two nuts over here which you have to put into the railing and then hook on to the two screws and then fasten them up i'm not sure why this particular nut and screw set is not pre-installed on the filament holder because the same nut set is found on like the screen holder and the Z-axis limiter switch and they were all pre-installed. So let's do it this way. Screw onto the filament holder and then install the nut just lightly. Let's do it for both sides and then you can slide the nut into the profile railing and tighten them up. Last will be the toilet roll holder. Well, it's not a toilet roll holder, but it does look like that. Uh, just unfasten the big plastic nut, put the rollers in and tighten it up. With that, then let's just power it on, remove the protective sticker and make sure that the printer is working well. At this stage, we make sure that Auto Home is working, all the axes are working well and we level the bed. Once this is done, we are ready to print. Okay, I will not be going through all these steps in this video. You can check out my other videos for all the 3D printer tips and also a particular one in comparison of the Ender 3 and the Ender 3 V2. Alright then, hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and like and also share this video to your friends. See you next time. Bye-bye.